How is it going, Tune to the World? It is your pal, Mega Snoop, bringing you another Toontastic video. And in today's video, I wanted to discuss the Cogments in Cashbot HQ. Now, before I get into anything, I'm going to let you know that my pal, Gag Strategist, made this video long before I did. So right now, I'm going to link it up on the screen, and you can click it, and you can watch it, and I can guarantee you it goes way more in-depth than mine ever will. But if you want to stick around and listen to my version of the spiel, by all means, hang out and have some fun. But I just wanted to give him that little shout out because I know he works hard to do what he does and I want you guys to go check that out. But without further ado, let's get started here. So in Cashbot HQ, there are three different mints. There's the Coin Mint, the Dollar Mint, and the Bullion Mint. And there's a few distinct differences between them. The Coin Mint has no laugh limit, usually has four to six battles, and has times four gag experience in it. The Dollar Mint has a 66 laugh limit, has about six to nine battles, and has a times five multiplier for gag experience. And the Bullion Mint has a 71 laugh limit, about nine to 11 battles, and a times six gag multiplier. And for each different type of mint, coin, dollar, and bullion, there are 20 different floor variations, which will change up the order in which each room and battle will appear. Now, before you even go into these mints, it's recommended to have max sound, since through these mints, sound is the prominent strategy. Though if you're going with some higher tuned friends who have max sound, my recommendations is for coin mint, at least have the elephant trunk. For dollar, at least have fog, but for bullion, I would suggest you have max sound. Though if you ask other people, they'll just tell you to have max sound. So just it, to make it simple, just have max sound. We'll, we'll, we'll all get through it a lot easier. Now what are the mints used for though? Mints are primarily used for getting cog bucks so people can CFO. There are also some Donald's Dreamland tasks in which you need to defeat things like loan sharks in a cog mint, or skele cogs in a cog mint, or to defeat just a certain amount of cog mints. And something that you can hold true for every single mint, whether you do coin, dollar, or bullion, is that the last battle will always, always, always have three level 11s and a level 12. Now there are three different types of cogs that you can find inside the mints. You can find money bags, which will only be at level 10, loan sharks that you can find at levels 10 and 11, and robber barons that you can find at levels 10, 11, and the last cog in the whole mint, which is a level 12, will always be a robber baron. Although it'll appear as a skeleton cog, when you defeat it, it'll count as you destroying a robber baron. With that being said, the level of cogs you can find in a mint is between 10 and 12. You will never find anything lower. Another tidbit I wanted to bring up in this video is something that Toontown actually released recently. There's a parkour portion of the mint that seems to stump quite a few people, especially the newer ones. And in the footage you'll see before you, you can see me running through it. And what you'll notice new, if you've done these before, is that there will be heads across the top and a timer in the corner. The timer in the corner is helpful because if it does run to zero, it'll automatically teleport you to the end, and it'll only sacrifice a small portion of your laugh in order to do so. This is preferable because there are some people that just couldn't do the parkour before, and they would get left behind, get mad, and just quit. And the heads across the top signify which tunes have made it to the end so far. Once the tune head is lit up, then you know that that tune has finished the course and can go back without penalty of losing life. And the last little tip I have about this is just be patient. You might be really good at doing the parkour, but not everybody is. If somebody's having trouble, wait for them. It's not very toony to go on to the next battle and leave people behind. Now I'd like to talk about all the different types of battles there are in the mint and what strategies I use for them. The first one is when all four cogs are level 10. This is a very simple one fog three trunk rule. Another type is when there are three tens and one eleven. Now personally for me, I like to use one fog and three trunks. It'll keep the level eleven alive for one more round, but it's not so bad where you can just use a fire hose and take them out the next round. Other people may say two fog, two trunk, and that's fine too. For me personally, one fog is fine right there. When there's two tens and two elevens, this is where I'll say use two fog and two trunks or awugas. For four level elevens, definitely use two fogs, two trunks or awugas. And when there's three elevens and one twelve, most people will lean towards using three fogs and one trunk, though I will also find it acceptable if you use two fogs and two trunks or awugas. Again, it's the same concept of when there's three tens and eleven. In this case, the level twelve will be alive for one extra round, where you could easily take him out in the next round with one simple gag. Now this is the most controversial point, is especially when you're doing a bullion, there will be tunes out there that like to use the one fog rule, where you use one fog in every single battle. And if that's what you do, and you're with your friends that also like to do that, good for you, man. Good for you. I'm proud of you. 
that you found something you like to do. Me, I don't like it at all. I find it's not very helpful. You get hit a lot more, it takes more time, but that's just my recommendation here is, you know, not to use the one fog rule. But really, this whole video is just my opinion, so if you found something that you like better, that's great! But here I'd like to talk about the last thing. I mentioned it earlier, is the cog bucks. Most people will go into the coin mint so they can level up their cash bot suit, and they need cog bucks to do that. But how many cog bucks do you get from each mint? Now, mints are a bit different because the amount that you get varies from floor to floor and mint to mint. It's not like you can just do a lawn factory and get 776. When you do a coin mint, depending on the floor you get, you can get anywhere from 356 to 544. And a dollar, you can get anywhere from 679 to 1004. And bullions, you can get anywhere from 1202 to 1496. And because I don't want to go through each specific floor, I'm just going to put up some charts and you can take a look at those. They're very easily found on the Toontown Wiki if you really need something to help you out there. But just know if you need 300 cog bucks to get to the next promotion, you don't need to go into a bullion. A coin will get you there. But that's it for the cog mints and cash bot HQ. I hope you guys did enjoy. This is just kind of a generalization of how to get through the mint simply and easily. But if you guys have any extra tips, by all means, feel free to leave some comments down in the comment section below. I hope you all enjoyed, and I will see you guys next time. Hope you all enjoyed, and if you did, be sure to smash that like button. It helps me know that my work is appreciated. Leave a comment, and subscribe if you're new. You can check out my live stream at twitch.tv forward slash megasnoop. Follow me on Twitter at megasnooptr, and I hope you all have a toontastic day.